I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bummer here again for JoeBlow.com with another video edition of the best movie you never saw, and this week we're taking a look at one of the great Nicolas Cage movies, Lord of War. Now, in the late 80s, early 90s, a low-level thug, Yuri Orlov, played by Nicolas Cage, becomes an infamous arms dealer, exploiting his connections in the former Soviet Union and selling his wares to whomever has the cash. And in addition to Nicolas Cage, this co-stars Jared Leto, doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cocaine. You wanna Ian Holm, Bridget Moynihan, and Ethan Hawke, and it's directed and written by Andrew Nichol, who directed and wrote another one of our best movies you never saw, Gattaca. Now, no disrespect whatsoever intended for Nicolas Cage, who I have to say I'm absolutely a huge fan of, but 2005 might have been the last great year for him as an A-list star. This was before all the tax troubles that forced him into accepting way too many roles that were beneath him, and at the time, Nicolas Cage was one of the biggest stars on the planet. He was able to skillfully juggle commercial prospects like The Sorcerer's Apprentice or National Treasure with more artistic ones, such as this and the same year as The Weatherman, which came out just a couple weeks later. Cage was just on an amazing role at the time, and Lord of War was a pet project of his, with him able to play against type as the cold-blooded, immoral Yui Orloff, a composite character based on several infamous arms dealers. Written and directed by Andrew Nichol, Lord of War pretty much sunk like a stone at the US box office, opening up behind the Reese Witherspoon vehicle Just Like Heaven and the exorcism of Emily Rose, ended up making only about $24 million domestically, which wasn't a great result for a movie that cost $50 million. But luckily, audiences overseas liked the movie a heck of a lot more than they did in the US. And it ended up grossing about $72 million worldwide, which may have been enough to push it in the black. And I think it's been a relatively successful movie on home video and cable. Critically, it was pretty well received, but not overwhelmingly so. And around Oscar time, of course, it was totally ignored. And when it came out on home video, Oddly, it was sold as a straightforward action flick, which it definitely isn't, and Lionsgate at the time, I guess, really mishandled the release of the film, even transferring the DVD at the wrong aspect ratio of 178 to 1 when the movie was actually shot in scope in 235 to 1. Luckily, that's been rectified in the Blu-ray and digital releases of the film. Now, Lord of War is an example of a type of movie that Hollywood has all but given up on making, the big-budget adult drama. Nowadays, given a star with a similar stature to Cage's at the time, Lord of War might still get made, but it would be made for a fraction of the cost and nowhere near as lavishly. Despite the tough subject matter, Lord of War is a pretty big movie. Beautifully shot with innovative CGI used to enhance but not dominate the story, and some really big stars in juicy roles, you can't help but feel nostalgic for the era in which it was made. Sure, it was only 15 years ago, but the business has changed so much it might have well have been a lifetime ago. Nowadays, financier would be bent on making Yuri likable. Take, for example, the recent War Dogs. Now, the way Todd Phillips had to constantly jam in scenes showing that the Miles Teller character had a conscience kept the focus away from who it should have been on, Jonah Hill's more immoral, and I have to say realistic, thug gunrunner. Gunrunners are not nice guys. Fact is, actually, they're kind of bastards. They make money off of murder, and Cage's character is utterly unsympathetic here, which is pretty ballsy. They don't make him a nice guy. He's a scumbag. But Cage is working at the peak of his ability. He makes it work the same guy a guy like Al Pacino did in Scarface, making this kind of a classic gangster movie. And what else is a gun runner but a two-bit gangster? He's a bastard, but he's kind of likable, and you kind of want him to succeed despite yourself. Isn't that crazy? Well, there is a subplot that revolves around his beauty queen wife played by Bridget Moynihan that feels a little bit tacked on, while Ethan Hawke as an ATF agent has to spend most of his time moralizing, the movie is still pretty hardcore through and through. They play his adventures while evil are not necessarily portrayed in a dour way. I mean, it's a fun movie to watch. Even though he's a bastard, and even though he's a scumbag, and even though he's the worst of the worst, you're having a great time watching him do all these things. And you might feel a little bit guilty for it afterwards, but hey, that's what makes this a great movie. To watch Nicolas Cage in the movie, you really have to be impressed by the great acting that he's doing. And in fact, Ethan Hawke himself said in a Reddit AMA, and that, quote, I'm kind of obsessed with Nicolas Cage. He's the only actor since Marlon Brando that's actually done anything new with the art of acting. He's successfully taken us away from an obsession with naturalism and into a kind of presentation style of acting that I imagine was popular with the old troubadours. 
If I could erase his bottom half bad movies and only keep his top half movies, he would blow everyone else out of the water. He's maybe put a little too much water in his beer, but he's still one of the great actors of our time, and working with him was an absolute pleasure. In fact, one of my favorite scenes I've ever done is the last scene in Lord of War. I would tell you to go to hell. But I think you're already there. Cage's filmography definitely has suffered since Lord of War. He's had some financial problems and he's taken a lot of movies that are way, 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 way below him. And it's horrible to watch him in a movie like Grand Isle or even in something like Primal, which, you know, was kind of fun, but it's bargain basement all the way. Nicolas Cage is one of the greatest movie stars that we've ever had. But luckily, since Ethan Hawke gave that AMA, Cage has actually kind of come back and made some really interesting movies. While he still makes a lot of crap, there are some really interesting ones that are sprinkled in, such as Mandy, which I would say ranks up there with some of his best movies, and also Richard Stanley's recent Color Out of Space, which was really good. Um, the really fun movie Mom and Dad. Also, I have to say David Gordon Green's Joe is probably one of Nicolas Cage's best movies ever. I think it's kind of a masterpiece. I really love Nicolas Cage, and I hope that now he gets back on track and delivers the kind of amazing movies that I really think he's still capable of. Now, Cage himself seems to be having the time of his life embodying Yuri's immorality, but to his credit, he stops short of chewing any scenery. Now, Cage does often chew scenery, but usually it's in pretty bad movies. I mean, Cage chewing scenery sometimes is the only reason why you keep watching a movie. He doesn't need to chew the scenery in Lord of War. It's so well written that he can actually be kind of low-key when he needs to be. Another great performance in this movie comes from Jared Leto as his junkie brother who proves that discovering a conscience in this field is a very deadly prospect. Everyone's great in this including Oz's Emin Walker and that was one of my favorite shows by the way and this guy plays a warlord based on Liberia's Charles Taylor and of course the now retired Ian Holm, that's right Bilbo, as one of the more humane gun runners. Or is he? Now, I remember seeing Lord of War opening night at the Scotiabank Theatre in Montreal, and the audience applauded wildly at the end of the opening credit sequence, which shows a bullet being made, packaged, and finally shot into a child soldier. It's harrowing stuff, but it starts the movie off on an unforgettable note. And I was actually surprised, having seen the movie, to see that the box office was so low, because I honestly thought opening night that'd be a huge hit, because it was a packed audience. But I guess international audiences just took to this movie a little bit better than American audiences do. Although I think people have discovered it in recent years, and if you haven't seen this movie, I pretty much guarantee you're going to like it. Now luckily, it's pretty easy to see, it's on most of the streaming services, and in fact is available on 4K on some of them, and you can also find it on Blu-ray and digital, although I would avoid buying the DVD copy because as I said, it was transferred at the wrong aspect ratio, which is kind of a sloppy thing for the studio to have done. They may have fixed it in recent years, but you know, who uses standard def anymore? Visually striking with many interesting shots juxtaposing Cage against old Soviet monuments or bullets and running a lean 120 minutes, Lord of War is one of those movies I go back to every few years, getting something new out of it every time. Hopefully Cage is going to find his way back to this kind of material, as there aren't many actors out there that could have pulled the movie off the way he does here. Until next time, for JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Bumbring.